Well, tell you what, as the, they're not exactly selfie sticks, I guess. As they're finding questions, I will take one that came in from the webinar. Why use scales to diagnose ADHD when you can use DSM criteria? Because DSM criteria are limited. As I said before, they're contained to the original set. You, you have to include that in you know, a gold standard evaluation or one like for accommodations or whatnot. You have to account for DSM. The nice things about the adult ADHD rating scales, um, you have norms based on some of them, like the Barclay Adult ADHD rating scales, they are tied in with the DSM, but you could also look at percentiles of symptom endorsement, number of symptoms endorsed, and also the score, the additive score, like not at all, mild, moderate, severe, one through four, that whole score, and you can get norms of the overall symptom endorsement. And with some of the other scales, like the, the Brown Attention Deficit Disorder scales, the Connor Adult ADHD rating scales, in addition to being tied in with diagnostic criteria, there are other things more consistent with the impairments, the difficulties faced for adults. And like with the Connors Adult ADHD rating scale, there are different norms for males and females, and it's broken down by decades of age. So if you're a 25-year-old female, you'll be compared with other women aged 20 to 29 and likewise through. So you have more specific norms and just different, a wider range of scales, more tied in with executive functioning. So you just have wider symptom coverage because sometimes even with the adjustment in the, the, the symptom threshold for ADHD and the DSM-5, they're still limited. Um, like I said, climbing on things, running around, you're just things that aren't just going to be relevant for adults with ADHD as worded. So hi, Dr.